everyone, Peter Hewitt, La Artistino, back again with another video tutorial. Today we will again be looking at pastel backgrounds. This time we will be adding the pastel to a picture that has already been coloured with coloured pencils. My concern with adding the pastel after the pencils is how much will the pastel colour stain and contaminate the pencil colours. This wouldn't be a worry if the pencils are dark and the pastels are light. But what if the pencils are pale or softly applied and the pastels are dark. How can you stop your nice soft pinks looking muddy brown? So today I'm going to experiment with different techniques to preserve the pencil colour under the pastels. I'll finish up by adding pastel to a picture in Joanna Basford's Lost Ocean that I've already coloured. For the purpose of this video I've created some shapes and coloured them in at one of the back pages of Lost Ocean. I've created them using a waterproof marker and coloured them in with a couple of uh, polychromous pencils. I've picked a light one so you can see um, best of all how the covering with pastels affects it. This one I've coloured in quite softly. This one I've coloured in with a normal pressure. This one I've pushed really hard on the pencil to burnish the picture down with, with the colours themselves. On these three I'm going to use three different pencils to coat them. The first one I'll be using the Derwent Blender Pencil. It looks just like this and it's a colourless pencil used for blending colours together. The next one I'm going to coat with the Lyra Blender Pencil which works exactly the same way as the Derwent Pencil. Now I understand that you can also get a Prismacolor Blender Pencil I don't have one of those to demonstrate with so I don't know quite how that would work out. Finally I'm going to use the very popular method of blending using a white pencil and this is a white polychromous pencil and I'll be using that on the last one. So here we go with the Derwent blender pencil and I'm just going to coat over the top of my pencils. Now my thought here is that if I can seal it down with the blender pencil it will help to act as a resist against the pastels. And when I say resist I mean that the pastels will not have any surface, toothy surface to grip onto and therefore will slide off the actual coloured parts where they will adhere to the toothy raw paper. just done with the Lyra one. Now I'll be using the white polychromous for the last one. Now the thing that I noticed straight away with using the white pencil is that it will bleach the colours underneath being a white pencil which is fine if you want to soften the colours before adding the pastels but I would think if you wanted to keep your colours nice and bright you would like to stick or you, it would be preferable to stick with the blender pencils which have no colour to contaminate the original coloured pencils. Right that's done. Now we're going to see what happens when we add the pastel over the top. So there's my blue and this time instead of scratching it off because I just want to do a, a small area and I think this is quite a valid way of doing it as well. Just rub your pad over the top to pick up some. And I think, and just watch out because I'm getting a little bit of dust fall off at the same time. There we go, I think that's enough. Now let's start with the soft. Okay, now the normal coloured. Now the one that I've coloured in quite hard and deep. I'm running out of pastel here so I'm going to grab my pastel stick again, give it a little bit of a rub, pick up some more. Now let's see what the Derwent blender does. The Lyra blender. And finally, the white pencil. 
Okay. Doesn't it look magical adding the background to the colours already? There we go. Okay, let's examine what we've got here. Just a little puffer there to blow off the excess. Now, first of all, we can see that the soft application of the pencils has been very badly stained by the pastels. You can see there's a lot of pastel colour that's turned a lot of that creamy colour into a green colour. So, not very good for soft application. This is normal application. Well, that's certainly a lot better. I can still see some blue contamination there. There is a faint blue contamination, which I can see. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it's not so bad. In contrast, the hard application, there is no contamination at all. It's very clear that the colours have remained pure. And I can hardly see oh, the very bare specks of blue, and you certainly wouldn't notice it. Moving on to the Derwent Blender, uh, I think we've got a better result here than with just uh, the plain pencils. There's still a little bit of colour contamination, but it's not very bad. The Lyra Blender, I think, actually did a better job of keeping out the blue. Um, particularly I can see in the purple, it might be a bit hard to pick up on camera but in this one the purple looks more bluish and in this one the purple is, is stayed rather warm. So I think out of the two blenders the Lyra blender is better and to tell you the truth I do prefer the Lyra blender. I find it's a smoother application where the Derwent blender feels a bit grainy. Finally the white pencil. And the white pencil did a beautiful, beautiful job of preserving the colour. I can see absolutely no contamination whatsoever. And unfortunately, as I said before, with the white pencil, it will um, bleach your colour very slightly. But still, if you want to preserve your light colours, it might be a good idea to coat it with the white pencil. Now, just to see how that works without the pencil on beforehand, if we just want to see just how well each of these three techniques will resist, I'm going to colour in each of these boxes with one of these pencils. And then we're going to put the pastel over the top and see how they protect the white of the paper below. So to start off with again, I'll go the Derwent Blender. I'll leave that one plain as the control. And we'll go with the Derwent Blender and I'll give this a nice thick coating. Just notice in the Derwent Blender just leaves a very faint greyish cast on that paper. I hadn't noticed that before. Now we'll go for the Lyra Rembrandt Blender. Hmm. Well, I'm not getting the really noticeable grey cast that I was with the Derwent Blender. That's nice. And again, I find the Lara Blender is a bit smoother to use. Finally, we'll go for the white pencil and see how that does in comparison. Right, now let's choose another colour and see how we go applying over that like a nice one, we'll go for a nice burgundy. Let's rub some of this off. Okay, we've got a nice amount on that. And let's apply first the control, of course with no resist whatsoever. Ah, now we're seeing how it works. There you go with the Derwent blender. Now there's the Lyra Blender. And finally, the white pencil. And what a difference. They really do resist the pastels. So in conclusion, for this little experiment, I would say that if you're applying your pencils fairly firmly, then you're right. You the pastels won't stain them. But if you're applying your pastels fairly soft, your pencils, sorry, fairly softly, then I would suggest using a, another type of pencil over the top to preserve the colours. 
Looking at these three, I think the Derwent Blender performed the worst. I can still see quite a bit of pink contamination, although it's, it's better than nothing. The Lyra Blender did very well, and so did the white pencil. So I think the Lyra Blender and the white pencils are a winner. So if you're applying your pencil lightly, this is an idea to help preserve them before adding your pastels. Here is my pre-coloured picture in Lost Ocean. As you can see, it's one of the first big double spreads. And I'm about to colour it with the pastels. And here is the double spread complete. As you can see, I finished the second part of the picture off camera using exactly the same techniques that I used for the first half. If you're interested in learning more about my pastel ap application technique, please refer to an earlier video that I've got on my channel. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've got something out of it that will add to your colouring experience. Until next time, happy colouring! Thank you.